Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the second of East Coast College's Apprenticeship Employer Webinar um, in line with National Apprenticeship Week. Uh, this webinar is being recorded, so we can share out to the wider audience as well, but many thanks for attending this morning. Part of this webinar, I'd like to introduce you to Balfour Beatty, Bam Nuttall, Flannery Plant Hire, and Farrens, who are joining us today. Each employer will do some presentations around local context and apprenticeship offers. Um, can I ask that anybody who is in the webinar uses the chat function to ask any questions, and then we'll do a Q&A at the end of the session. So just a summary about actually what is an apprenticeship. Apprenticeships give you the chance to earn while you learn and combine practical training in a job with learning at college. As an apprentice, you'll be employed and work alongside experienced staff, gain job specific skills, earn a wage and get holiday entitlement, and also get time off towards your training if attending at college. The length of your apprenticeship will depend on the level you are studying. Apprentices can start at level two and work all the way through to degree level at level six. At East Coast College, we offer a variety of apprenticeships and work with over 600 employers across Norfolk and Suffolk. At any point, we have over 700 active apprentices studying with us each year. Our apprenticeship trainers are all experts in the field and facilitate on working on our college campuses as well as seeing you in the workplace. We've got a variety of apprenticeship courses that are evolving all of the time to meet industry needs and what is happening in region. So these include engineering, offshore wind, the construction trades, groundworks, and more localised offers such as boat building and meeting the service industries. So how to become an apprentice? You can apply for an apprenticeship while you're still at school or while you're studying on a college course. To start one though, you do need to be over the age of 16, living in England and actually not in full-time education at the start of the apprenticeship. So you can't do an apprenticeship and a full-time course at the same time. So to find an employer, you can register yourself with a National Apprenticeship Service on the website you can see in the slide. This allows you to select what job vacancies you'd be interested in, and then you can receive notification. All of the East Coast College adverts are also put on there. Um, another option is to make sure that you send a really glowing CV out to the sector, saying explaining that you're interested in um, future opportunities and a cover and letter showcasing why you think you'd be a good apprentice. Also as well, some apprentices find their own placements, um, so always liaise with the apprenticeship team so we can make sure you're supported on the journey. Okay, so I'd now like to pass over to the first one of our employers, which is Balfour Beatty. Hi everyone, my name's Lizzie. Um, I'm Project Communications Manager from Balfour Beatty. I support a number of projects in the region, including uh, the Lowest Off Flood Risk Management Project, um, which has just started in, in Lowest Off, and I'll tell you a bit about that later. Um, I've worked in a number of industries, um, mainly in communications roles, insurance, accountancy. I did my A-levels in Northamptonshire and then went on to university. Uh, I've been in construction now for three years um, and my role includes supporting employment and skills, project communications and social value. My colleague Sam is on the call as well, so I'm just going to let him introduce himself. Hello, you're right, everyone. Um, I'm Samuel Phillips. I'm an apprentice site engineer for Balfour Beatty. I'm currently on the lowest of tidal walls project where I've been for four months. Um, I started with Balfour Beatty um, back in 2017, where I was brought on as a trainee construction manager on the gas and water contract where we were working for Anglin Water. Um, that was where I kind of helped manage sites with um, a number of site managers and also done small bits of surveying. Um, I got into it through studying um, a BTEC, level three engineering at the UTCN um, in Norwich. Um, studied that for two years and then I applied for the apprenticeship and obviously got accepted, got taken on, and they are currently funding me to do a degree in construction man management. I'm um, currently in year four, 
I've got two years left as it's a five-year course. Um, and yeah, at the moment we're just at lower software. I do things such as setting out and um, surveying um, for the tidal wall that we are currently building. So if anyone hasn't heard of Valve BT uh, before, we're quite a large infrastructure and engineering company um, and uh, we operate all over the UK. Uh, we've got offices in the USA and Hong Kong as well. Uh, we largely build, maintain and um, fund vital infrastructure across the, across the country. We've got nearly 30,000 people working for us, uh, quite a large revenue and we've been around for 110 years. So what sectors do we work in? Uh, we work in a range of sectors. We've got transport, so things like roads, um, railways and airports, all the things that we depend on to, to get around. Uh, we also deal with power and energy, so nuclear power, uh, transmission and distribution, and also renewable energy, which is um, really important at the moment. We also um, maintain gas infrastructure, um, as uh, Sam was saying, the, the region that he worked in before. Uh, so all the gas that heats our homes, uh, water that, that we depend on, um, and we have various maintenance contracts as well um, with, with different utilities businesses uh, that maintain that important infrastructure. But we also have um, contracts with social infrastructure, so commercial buildings, offices, uh, schools, hospitals, um, and we also maintain public spaces. Uh, we've got residential housing that, that we build, student accommodation, and things like um, stadiums that you can see there on the screen. So some of our projects, uh, some that you might have heard of before because they're quite famous. Uh, we've got a large number of contracts with the HS2 um, project. We um, did the Olympic Stadium, uh, which some of you may have visited before. Uh, Crossrail, the A14, uh, which was the largest um, highways project of its time, worth billions of pounds, um, and also smart motorways as well. But we are actually uh, working in, in Lowestoft and you can see some, some photos there of um, Lake Lothing and the harbour and also um, some really unfortunate flooding which happened in 2013, which I'm sure some of you on the call will either remember or know about, which was the tidal surge. Um, and unfortunately, Lowestoft is, is one of the, um, or is the only coastal town in the UK without sufficient flood defences. Um, so what Balfabiti are doing, if you could just go to the next slide, please as Samuel mentioned, is we're um, building flood walls, so tidal walls that, is get, that are built to prevent um, flooding in the event of a, a tidal surge in the future, and also um, the design and construction of a tidal barrier um, in, in the harbour, which will protect um, even further against those, those threats of flooding. Next slide, please. So how can you work with Balfour BT? So we do offer, uh, we are working in the town. Um, we have a number of roles that will be available with us in the future. We also are offering work experience opportunities uh, for East Coast College students. Um, there's definitely going to be um, opportunities to visit our sites and learn more about our projects. Um, and we release apprenticeship roles every year around this time. And the application window is open until April. Uh, so we'd encourage everyone to visit our website and see what we have available. Next slide, please. So there's loads of different apprenticeships available with a company like Balfour BT. Um, you don't have to have uh, GCSEs or A-levels. Um, Samuel mentioned he's, he's got a BTEC in engineering. Um, and we also have roles available in other areas like HR, health and safety, design, communications and marketing, which is, which is what I do. Uh, the levels there you can see on the screen, uh, we do offer intermediate apprenticeships. So that's level two upwards. That's usually with our subcontractors and based around um, construction trades. We have advanced apprenticeships, which you do need your GCSEs or the equivalent, that's level three. And then once you've um, done that, you can move on to a level four or higher or degree apprenticeship, which you need the A-levels or the diploma like a BTEC. Um, and then you, you go on to our, um, our degree apprenticeship level six levels, uh, which is the, the graduate scheme. So there's a, there's a whole range of um, opportunities available depending on the level that you're working at now or into in the future.
So as we said, there's so many different opportunities. We work in so many sectors. We work, we build bridges, we build railways, schools and hospitals, and also the infrastructure that powers our homes and heats our homes. Um, so our projects do really um, positively benefit um, the, the, the um, communities around us. Next slide, please. So some fre frequently asked questions, you can see on the, the screen there, we do have our apprentice intake from um, January um, each year, and they usually open between um, April and May. Um, and we do encourage people to apply as soon as possible in those, in those windows. Um, the, the applications are all on our website, so the web address is there and um, we'll share this with you afterwards. Um, we do receive a high volume of applications, so uh, apply as soon as you can, the, the earlier the better. But individual closing dates will be on each each role, um, each individual role. Um, there's usually an online application that you need to fill out, followed by an assessment centre or an interview, which um, can consist of a group exercise, a presentation, and a formal interview. Um, obviously, the, at the moment they, they're taking different formats. Um, so, so once you apply, you'll you'll be guided through the process. Next slide, please. So some tips from us for applying, um, really build your CV so that it's, um, it's, it's really good and strong. Um, if you can demonstrate strong values, things that are important to you, um, things that you're excited about and what you want to do in your career, um, even if they, they might change or your career changes direction, it's always going to have a sense of, of where you want to be and show that to an employer. Um, apprenticeships mean continued learning. You do still go to university or college one day a week. You're given all the support you need um, so really you, you do need to be committed to, to that future development and developing with um, your role with the, the company as well as, as personally and professionally. Next slide, please. So some tips from us also to, to get, get your foot in the door. Um, ask employers for work experience. You know, Balfiti will be on site in Lowestoft for the next few years. Uh, and we'd, we'd love to see some of you at our site, even if it's just for a visit or some taster days, um, get you familiar with the workplace and how, how everything uh, people are expected to behave and what's expected of you as an apprentice. Um, there are opportunities out there, so you really do go out and see them, uh, see what they are. Um, the more passionate and enthusiastic you are for um, the role, uh, the, the project and, and your, your future career um, will really, really um, benefit you in terms of the employer. And, uh, you know, just, just talk to us. Um, we, we are always here for help and advice, applications. We do have a separate team that deal with all of the applications uh, for our early, early years careers. Um, but but we're, we're working on the project. We're in the Lowestoft area and uh, we'd, be, we'd be absolutely glad to answer any questions uh, or give you any advice. Next slide, please. So tips for a great CV, keep it short and strong, uh, keep it up to date. Um, you can, if, even if you don't have any relevant job experience, you can use experience in your studies, you can use experience in your personal life, anything you've been interested in, your hobbies that will really um, help bring your uh, personal values and behaviours to life. Um, always proofread it. Um, always be truthful. Be honest in your in your CV uh, because if you, if you if you sort of bend the truth about anything, you know it's it's likely that uh, the employer will find out. Uh, so make sure you include your your grades and dates and things. Um, and remember that your CV is the first point of contact between you and a potential employer. So really make it stand out. Next slide, please. So what you can do next, uh, keep in contact with people in the workplace and don't, don't be afraid to reach out to employers, whoever they are, um, you know, pick up the phone or, or send an email. The worst someone's going to say is no. Uh, we said build, build a really good CV, um, get to know uh, what, what the workplace is like, ask questions, ask your parents um, and your friends and just keep an open mind to any advice and guidance you, you receive. Next slide, please. I think. might be the end. I'm going to wait for the slides to, to catch up. Ah, so yeah, how to apply. So I mentioned our website, um, the, the address is there. Um, there's more frequently asked questions and information um, on the parents and teachers page. So have a look there as well with your, with your parents or your, or your um, tutors. Um, and 
any information you uh, you have about any of the particular roles, our, our emerging talent email address is, is there on the screen. And we'd be happy to answer any questions later at the end of this presentation as well. Okay, um, so you're hearing from a few of us today. Uh, so my name is Paul Skerry. I'm the Early Careers and Professional Development Manager for uh, BAM in the UK. So just tell you a little bit first about the Royal BAM Group. Um, we're one of the largest construction companies in Europe. So uh, we're similar to Balfour BT. We, uh, we do um, similar kinds of work. Um, so uh, turnover of about 7.2 billion euros, 20,000 employees. We work across um, 10. Um, we've got 10 individual companies uh, across uh, Europe and uh, worldwide. Um, and uh, we currently work in uh, 30 countries across the world. So just a little bit there about the, the structure of BAM. Um, so within the UK, there are two main operating companies. Um, BAM Construct UK is the building company. So uh, BAM Construct builds schools, hospitals, office blocks, those kind of things. And BAM Nuttall are the civil engineering company. So BAM Nuttall are involved in flood defence, uh, road construction. So again, uh, like you've seen with Balfour BT, smart motorways, that kind of thing, power stations, um, uh, tunnelling. Um, we've worked on things like uh, the Olympic Park, Crossrail, uh, the Hinkley Point Nuclear Power Station, and uh, quite a few schemes uh, in and around East Anglia. Um, just in part of the wide, in, in terms of the wider group there, um, we um, we work across Germany, Belgium, Ireland, and uh, and the Netherlands. And the parent company is actually based in the Netherlands. But uh, um, as a as a group, uh, we're about 150 years old. And as uh, Nuttall in the UK, we're um, I think now approaching about 170 years old. So. Uh, uh, have been established for a sing, similar length of time to Balfour of 80. Let's let the slide catch up. So here's some um, um, slides indicating the kinds of things that we do. Um, so this is Bam Nuttall, the civil engineering uh, side of the business. Um, so Bam Nuttall has 3,000 employees working on 100 projects throughout the UK. And some of our more notable schemes are things like the Thames Tideway Tunnel. Uh, we're working there with Balfour Beatty. Um, also the uh, Olympic Park Regeneration Project. Uh, we did that a few years back, but we're also involved in uh, Crossrail, uh, the new Elizabethan line, um, the Smart Motorway Network. Um, and you can see we've got some uh, marine works there. Uh, uh, at the top of the screen um, and uh, locally a couple of projects we've been involved with um, uh, would be um, the Great Yarmouth uh, Outer Harbour um, and um, also uh, a number of projects for the Environment Agency uh, um, sort of across East Anglia including the Broadland Flood Alleviation Project um, which uh, is where I started out with Nuttall nearly 20 years ago uh, before I moved uh, uh, much later on into a training role. So uh, I've got uh, um, some, some passion for what's going on locally within uh, um, um, you know, East, East Anglia. Um, and um, so further afield, um, we're involved in some really quite exciting projects, uh, um, including things such as uh, the Antarctic Infrastructure Modernisation Project, which we're delivering for the British Antarctic Survey. Um, and you may well have heard of the Sir David Attenborough um, British Antarctic Survey vessel, the new vessel. Uh, that was the one that uh, there was uh, much debate over what they were going to call it, uh, uh, Boating at Boatface. Um, but uh, we've been involved in um, building the new wharf for that and really, really interesting um, sustainability project, that one, because whatever we build uh, must be taken away at the end of the project. Um, and uh, and everything is built in kit form in the UK and then shipped uh, 16 weeks across uh, all the way to Antarctica, where it's uh, rebuilt uh, from uh, from a kit of parts. So uh, we do get to uh, work on some quite exciting things. 
So next slide, uh, BAM Construct. Uh, BAM Construct in the UK, so um, uh, the, um, the building construction arm is involved with uh, the design, construction, refurbishment and operation of buildings. We work with both public and private sector clients. You can see BAM Construct is of a similar size to Nuttall and similar turnover, about a million pounds uh, worth of turnover every year. Um, and um, um, some of the projects we've been involved with there, um, the First Direct Arena in Leeds, uh, the Victorian Albert Museum in Dundee, and uh, recently a number of our staff were involved in the construction of the Nightingale Hospitals, including some of our apprentices, and they've got some fantastic stories to tell uh, um, as a result of working on those projects. Okay, so, um, BAM, we like to do things a little bit differently. We've got a strong digital focus um, and um, uh, we're, we're looking now at building many of our projects uh, virtually first in the digital environment. Um, we, um, we're going to see much, much more uh, factory build within the UK. So uh, civil engineering isn't just about muddy wellies. Um, it's all construction. It's, uh, it, we're starting to move into a very different space now. Um, so um, all, all these things are out there. You can search them on our YouTube channel, see the kinds of things we're doing. Uh, Learning Camera is a 360 degree camera that uh, um, we use uh, to take um, 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 3D images of uh, what we're producing and, uh, and then take that back into the office environment to develop the design and to, to, to plan the projects. Um, and 3D printing, um, so we, we're uh, pioneering in that field. We're, uh, so you may well have seen that within um, um, DT um, and uh, where, where you take a 3D file and you produce an object uh, using um, um, you know, spraying machine. We're starting to do that now with reinforced concrete. And uh, I think we hold the record at the moment for the longest 3D printed bridge structure, which is a little over uh, 30 meters. And that's, uh, that's recently been built in the Netherlands. But uh, so uh, it's, um, um, yeah, it, it's all new stuff, but uh, really quite interesting. And it's all out there on YouTube. Okay, so apprenticeships. It is an apprenticeship the right route for you? Um, so again, um, we're offering a similar product to um, Balfour Beatty, um, all the way through from level two to, uh, to level six. Our main programme is our level four programme, um, which um, um, uh, leads to an HNC qualification and uh, technical membership of uh, a professional institution. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that first. Okay, so just before I do that, um, we're quite proud of what we do with our apprenticeship program. Um, and um, um, recently we've been uh, um, recognized uh, in uh, a number of awards. Um, the um, Rate My Apprenticeship Awards is something we're particularly proud of. Um, the feedback for those awards is provided by our own apprentices. Um, we've been in the top 100 employers now for um, probably about the last sort of three to four years. Um, and uh, last July, we were awarded second place in the top 100 apprenticeship employers for the year. Um, and that puts us first placed in terms of uh, construction in the built environment. Um, also, our main training provider for our Level 4 programme, uh, that's Leeds College of Building. We run a block release programme at Leeds College of Building. Um, we're second place in the top 50 training providers, so uh, something we're particularly proud of there. Okay, so just talking about the main apprenticeship pathways. Um, so uh, the main pathways are shown in orange at the bottom, but across the two business lines, so civil engineering and construction, we've got civil engineering apprenticeships, construction management, quantity surveying and building services engineering. Um, but also a number of support apprenticeships, so business admin, HR, IT, so data analysts, digital engineers, and also uh, craft trades, um, so we still offer um, opportunity for craft trades, so groundwork, electrical and uh, joinery apprenticeships. 
The main technical apprenticeship programs in Orange are delivered block release at Leeds College of Building. Those shown um, in black above um, tend to be delivered on a local basis through a local network of colleges. So uh, um, we offer both the, the local and the national product. So the program, um, level four program we're talking about here, the, the, the main academic uh, route, the technical program, two years to complete the level four, that's at Leeds College of Building, and then the level six degree is a three year top up. Um, and, um, and that's uh, delivered uh, through a number of local universities. Uh, that tends to be delivered day release, whereas the level four is delivered block release. Um, and um, it's a little bit longer than doing things via the traditional academic route, but of course you're gaining experience uh, while you um, while you study, so you're earning while you earning while you learn. A little bit now about program structure. So I think we've we've kind of covered that that uh, the Leeds College of Building program is level four with an HNC to, with the option to top up to the degree. We don't market our program as a degree program. Um, the degree is optional. Um, it doesn't suit everybody. So we like to think that uh, we're offering routes um, um, into uh, the industry for everyone. And you know, some are more academic than others. And uh, and for some, the uh, the academic piece comes a little bit later on in life, and and that's okay. We see people join us do the level four program and then do the degree a little bit further down the line. Um, the important thing is that you do what's right for you. Um, site placements, uh, you'll get to gain hands-on experience from day one and you'll get support from um, uh, a number of um, uh, people within the business, not just on your site but across the wider business. And we're very proud of our professional development uh, reputation. Um, we have um, probably uh, the best part of 100 or so uh, people a year going on to achieve professional qualification. Uh, we're going to see much, much more of that with the new um, apprenticeship standards and the main routes um, for membership there are through the Institution of Civil Engineers, RICS, the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors um, and also uh, for the Builders CIOB. So um, there's some of our cohorts. Um, the block release program is typically, for the main technical program, is typically delivered in nine week blocks. It's a bespoke program for BAM. So you'll only be on program with uh, BAM learners, very experienced team, uh, teachers, um, le lecturing staff that are used to uh, um, the way that um, um, we, uh, we work as a company. Um, the program includes guest lectures, you get to stay away, so it's like the university experience, but totally funded, um, and uh, there's a good social program that exists on the back of the program. So our site placements uh, tend to be on projects throughout the UK, so projects such as the Great Yarmouth Project, um, um, and um, we have, as I said earlier, um, somewhere between um, 250 and 300 apprentices at any point in time. We're very friendly, very welcoming. Uh, we've got a, uh, it's a very structured development program and many of the individuals that would support you on the program have come through this program themselves so they know what, to, what it's about. So just a little bit in terms of our application process. So we have just completed our application process for uh, this academic year. So the next uh, uh, intake, uh, so the um, vacancies will be advertised uh, in October uh, with a deadline for completion in December this year. Um, and then interviews and assessment centres will be February next year with the apprenticeship start in October 22. Um, it's an online application with three main questions. Again, we're looking for your enthusiasm and willingness to learn. Um, demonstrating a passion for working in construction. We know you won't have done that, but we're looking for the kind of uh, values and, uh, and the transferable experience there. Um, uh, the two sides of the business, the BAM construct business tends to deliver regionally. Uh, the Nuttall business is a national business. Um, so um, we, we do require you, if you work from Nuttall, for Nuttall to be uh, comfortable with living uh, or working away from home. So uh, that way you take advantage of the best opportunities. 
from the assessment centre when, when we run those. So again, um, uh, as Ralph and Peter have just said, we're running those virtually at the moment, um, but we're looking for you to be enthusiastic, uh, have a good understanding of um, um, the kind of things that we do. Um, um, we're looking for um, you to have re re really to think in the same way that we do so be aligned with our values and our values are all about um, being trustworthy and being innovative and, and all that kind of thing um, and uh, and again if you're interested you come talk to us and uh, maybe come and do some work experience and get, and get a feel for what we're doing and, and that would certainly help you in your uh, application um, it's all about thinking ahead and planning for the interview process and think about that transferable experience. We know you may, maybe in the current environment you might not might have missed out on work experience and that kind of thing. But uh, but but we want to know how you tick, and we, we want to know how uh, um, how you'll adapt to working in construction. Okay, so not questions now. They're they're, they're for the bit at the end of the uh, process. So I'm just going to hand over now. I think to Flannery. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Paul Allman. I'm Business Development Director for Flannery Planter. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Flannery's and our focus on apprenticeships. If we can move on to the next slide. So the business itself was started back in 1972 by Patrick Flannery and has grown into the largest provider of equipment and operators into the um, construction sector in the UK. Um, and we work closely with companies like Balfour BT and Bam Nuttall and a range of other clients across the, across the country. Move on to the next slide, please. So just a few highlights really in terms of uh, um, our numbers, in terms of what we do as a business. So we've got depots throughout the UK. So we work literally from Land's End to John O'Groats all across the country and across in Ireland as well. We're working on projects all over the UK, uh, basically. We, we employ at any one time over a thousand operators working for us. Um, really focus on safety. Safety is very key to us as a business. So we do an awful lot of um, safety training days to make sure all of our staff a focus on safety wherever they're working and apprenticeships are a key part of our business um this year we've just started a new batch of apprentices but we generally have between 30 to 50 apprentices working for us at any one time um and we work for a lot of different customers over 2,000 customers across the uk um i'd say we are the biggest in our sector we have we, we have over 3,000 machines with operators working at any one time across the uk if we can move on to the next slide please so in terms of skills and people, apprenticeships is very key to us. We've been undertaking the apprenticeship programme for the last 10 years, and that's a key focus for us to try and attract new people into the industry. We've got big opportunities throughout 2021. We just started a, a cohort of apprentices a few weeks ago, so six people from across the country who, who were actually training through our... Um, I'm sitting today at our new training centre in the West Midlands, which is called the Operator Skills Hub. If you look online on LinkedIn, Facebook, we've done a lot of promotion about that over the last few days. It's a joke, JV, we've done with Balfour Beach, because we both recognise we need to attract new talent and new people into the industry. So we made a, a big investment between both us, three quarters of a million pounds, to develop a, a centre where we feel we can attract the, the new talent that we need to, to fulfil the requirements of the industry over the, over the coming years. So throughout 2021, we'll be looking at um, new operators, new mechanics, a new high desk people. In addition, looking up skilling people to ensure our workforce has the up-to-date technical skills. Uh, we also support our staff heavily. We do a lot of work in terms of mental health and well-being. We recognise how important it is that our, our people who work for us are supported when they're working away from home and working on sites throughout the, throughout the UK. Um, and I, I think the key thing about the business, we're a family-owned business. As I mentioned at the start of the business, it was started by uh, Patrick Flannery Senior in, in, uh, back in 1973. We've got three members of the family working for the company now in senior roles and, and we really focus on looking after our staff and making sure they feel part of the, Fr the Flannery family and I think on the back of that we've got a, a very high uh, staff retention rate. If we can move on to the next slide please. Um, and here's four of our apprentices. So um, if you look at uh, the different people there, so Daniel Taylor, she started off her background. She worked for HSBC. She worked in, in, in a bank before in the quality department. She wanted to change of direction um, and started as one of our apprentices um, last year. She's been an excellent apprentice. She's now currently working on um, High Speed 2 
and is doing a really good job there. Um, we, we actually uh, put, a, put um, uh, Danielle up for an award last year, the Construction Planter Association, they generally have um, awards for apprentices of the year and Danielle actually won that, which is a really good testament to her um, ability. And it's, it's you know, really important for us to focus on how we're, we're trying to attract women into the sector as well. I think generally across the plant, our industry, women are generally un underrepresented. Um, we really want to try and attract more women into the industry and Daniel's a great ambassador uh, for the industry for us. Uh, another person we've got there is Aveta. She's uh, an apprentice um, hire controller. She works on our hire desk in our Wembley office. And she's, she, she also won an award in the Apprentice of the Year um, awards last year. And she's done a great job for us in that role as well. And we've got a couple of other people there as well. Michael, um, his background, he worked, He was in the Navy. He left the Navy after four years and he joined us as an apprentice. Um, and he's, he, I, I spoke to Michael the other day. He's really enjoying his change of career. Um, he's working on sites at the moment up in Manchester. So um, really good start off to his, to his um, career in, in, in the industry and also Sam as well. So we've got uh, our apprentices, we're really proud of them. They've done a great job for us so far. Um, a little bit about the apprenticeship program. So it's a 15 month program. Um, we've just started a new um, program called the, the a Trailblazer Apprenticeship, which is started this year. So we brought our first batch of people through. So we've got six people started that um, a few weeks ago. And we're looking for more apprentices to, to work on projects across the country over the next few years. We've done a lot of work in East Anglia um, over the last few years. So we've worked on the A14. That was a significant project for us. We had a, um, 300 people working for us on that project. We were also involved in Norwich on the uh, Norwich Ring Road uh, back in 2018, I think that was finished. So we had a number of people working for us there um, from across the Eastern region. So we're looking at people across the country. We've got a, a, lot, a strong focus on new projects in the region at the moment. And we're, look, we're looking for new people who are interested in working in the sector to, to, to come and um, look at us and look at our apprenticeship program as well. We move on to the next slide, please. Um, and that ends my presentation, really. So any questions, I look forward to having them at the end of the, uh, the presentations. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Vicky. I work for Barnes Construction. I hope you're all feeling very inspired. I know that I am um, hearing from all of these companies, especially 3D printing and huge bridges that have been printed in 3D printers. So I hope you can see that our industry is a really exciting place to work. It's got great opportunities and whether they are traditionally what you would think of in construction and engineering, whether it's working outside in the cold and wind in the, wind in the rain, or it's in an office actually, and doing a lot of different roles in terms of 3D and technologies and um, all these digital solutions. So um, I hope you're all feeling inspired to join our industry. That's what we like to do. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, Farrens today, um, just to give you a bit of an idea of who we are and what we do. But really what I want to talk to you today about is two very exciting projects that we have in the local area and they're just 10 miles apart. We are working with BAM on the, uh, as a joint venture on the Great Yarmouth Third River Crossing, which is going to be a fantastic lifting bridge, um, third bridge in the town. Um, and then also we are working on Gullwing in Lowestoft, so again another lifting bridge um, and both very technical, um, going to use a lot of kind of mechanical engineering and a lot of civil engineering skills there. Um, so we are uh, definitely recruiting in the local area and we are imminently looking for apprentices. Um, we're working with East Coast College and Suffolk University as well, um, just on our apprenticeship scheme. So hopefully I'll give you a bit of a, an overview of who we are. Um, and then at the end, you can get in touch with us just to see if you'd like to hear a bit more about our opportunities. So just to give you an overview of Farns, we um, are a subsidiary of CRH. So CRH are a global um, materials company. So they have offices throughout the world, across, across the planet. Um, and in, within um, CRH, there are over 85,000 employees. Um, Within Farns, we have um, offices in London, Edinburgh, Cambridge, um, Monaghan down in Ireland and Belfast. So we uh, have our sister companies there, Northstone and Cubis, which are also materials companies. So we uh, come from quite a big materials background, but Farns themselves have been around for 75 years delivering civil engineering and building. 
So just moving on to the next slide, uh, just to show you the kind of projects that we're involved in. We um, specialize in large scale civil engineering projects. Um, so you can see there we've done the Northern Spire in Sunderland. So we do specialize quite a bit in marine and in bridges. Uh, 12 Keys over in Liverpool, recently completed, and then the A6. Um, this is a motorway spec highway in Northern Ireland, and that was a project um, I was involved in quite directly. Um, so we do specialise in quite a lot of large scale infrastructure. Aside to that, we also specialise in building engineering, which is quite a different field um, and also a really exciting industry to be part of. Um, so you can see some of the different building jobs that we've done there across the UK. So just to give you an idea of where we operate. We have a map there and the next slide that will show you where we have our live projects and recently completed projects, but also where we are looking to um, get a bit more work and so where our live tenders are at the minute. And that just shows you where we're developing our work. So we're quite busy at the minute. We've got a lot of different sites on the go um, and we've got a lot of projects that we just finished up. Um, so we definitely are on a big recruitment drive and we do need more people um, in local areas where we're delivering our jobs. So just to give you an idea of the engineering sectors in which we work, we work in renewables, wastewater and uh, water, uh, transportation and large scale infrastructure, marine, residential, healthcare and education. And recently we did do quite a bit of work um, with local hospitals, getting them ready for the COVID-19 pandemic. So um, part of being a civil engineer is really coming up with solutions to problems in society. And we like to think that we go in and we help people and we fix them and we make a real difference in the work that we do. So that's a really big part of your future. Um, and certainly whenever you're thinking about your future career, um, you really want to think about a job where you can make a difference. And civil engineering and building engineering is certainly an industry where you can do that. So I'll just bring you on to um, our apprenticeship story so far. So really we um, started our apprenticeship journey uh, in about 2016 and that was whenever we started to bring on apprentices directly within our company. Prior to that we did have apprentices and we did have apprenticeships but we would have had those through our subcontracted workforce. So we've definitely been on a journey to bring them more in-house and bring them directly on with us as engineers or quantity surveyors or through planning. So we have been focusing on um, level five and level six apprenticeships, but we also um, work with level three apprentices. Um, and we do um, have those apprenticeships running across the multidisciplined roles. So that is within the building or civils or quantity surveying or pre-construction planning. And really what we have seen from um, taking on um, younger um, people within our workforce and encouraging them and motivating them and giving the experience um, of work at workplace while they're studying is that we have this massive talent stream. We have this new talent coming into the business, which is amazing. It gives us more innovative ideas. It gives us a fresh perspective on the industry. And it really, um, we're developing them, but they are also developing us. So our goal by the end of 2021 is to have 34 apprentices uh, directly with Barnes, and then we'll have other apprentices as well through our subcontracted workforce. So this is really what I want to highlight today is that we are working on two massive infrastructure projects, one with BAM and then one on our own. And uh, we will be recruiting apprentices locally in Lowestoft and Great Yarmouth. So we want you to get in touch with us um, if you're interested in working in the industry and if you want to be part of one of these uh, really amazing infrastructure projects. There are two nationally significant projects and if you want to be a part of them you can through your apprenticeship scheme. So just moving on to um, how we structure our apprenticeship scheme. So while you're an apprentice with us you will get a rotation um, to gain a full experience of the industry. So you will be on the ground um, in an engineering role but we will also bring you in for program planning, estimating, buying, quality, commercial and procurement and that's where you get a really rounded experience of all the different job roles that we have on a technical side to our business and then that will help you inform the decision you make going forward of which side of the business you might want to go into. Whether you want to stay in engineering or you maybe want to go into planning or buying or quality or commercial so that's really helps you inform your decisions as you move forward and I know myself that you can change your mind and it's perfectly acceptable. I actually came from an arts background um, and studied art and design 
and had a big change of heart while I went to university. Um, I was doing my foundation degree and I decided that it really wasn't for me because I couldn't see a career path um, through the arts directly. So I went and I changed my mind and I went and I did a different degree. And it's, it really does help to get a bit of a taster of all the different um, skill sets that are required and the different industries that you can move in and your career development and your career progression. And um, so this will really give you a taster of what you can do. And that um, will really help you inform your decisions for the future. And there is always time to change. And there's nothing wrong with changing. And there's also nothing wrong with knowing what you want to do straight away. And um, so it does help you inform your decisions. So just move it on to the next slide. Um, whenever you are um, on an apprenticeship scheme with us, you will also be enrolled on the Farns Foundation two year development program. So within the um, two year development program, we'll home your technical skills. And so that's really looking, you'll be doing survey boot camps, you'll be looking at health and safety, temporary works, commercial awareness, materials testing, program planning and buying. So that's really to hone your technical skills. So you'll be in a number of workshops and a number of boot camps. So then we can improve your technical skills. So don't be worried if you don't have those straight away. Um, then you'll be on a capability tracker. So that'll track your development and your technical skills on site and on progress. And that means if you want additional courses, you can get them, or if you want additional training in areas, we'll be able to provide that for you. Then through the development program, you'll also be put on a personal development um, scheme or a personal development program, sorry. And these will be useful sessions in terms of time management, uh, your behavioral awareness and how you work with others, how you communicate. Um, and this will give you an opportunity to be mentored as well um, by a, a more senior part of the team. And actually everyone within our company is put on this program and we all develop these skills. So again, it's okay if you don't have it straight away. We all need help with time management. We all need help with our communication skills. And we're all put on these programs to make sure that we kind of refine them and we develop ourselves. So it's good that you can do this as part of your apprenticeship scheme. It'll help you move forward in your career if it's not even just with us, even beyond that. And then your charterships. And um, so whilst you are on this development program, you will also also be given the opportunity to partake in a part in a chartership where you'll be able to join with a professional body. And that again will help you progress in your career. So I'm just going to um, show you Dermot. Um, Dermot's a great friend of mine. I've been working with him for uh, a number of years. Uh, he came on in 2016 and um, he started work with myself on the A6 Julian scheme um, and he came in at a level three and he worked with us in the A6 Julian scheme for at least um, four years so up until 2020 and in that time he progressed on to his level five um, foundation degree and that now he's moving into his civil engineering degree so you can see the progression of Dermot and how he's moved through the business and has continued his development um, at the same time as doing his degree and getting paid and getting his experience. So whilst he's been doing his level five and going on to do his degree, he's also within the Farns Foundation program. So that program will help him develop his technical skills, but also it will help him develop his personal skills. And Dermot would definitely recommend this as a route. And I want to dispel any myths that there are about apprenticeships. They are a great way to earn money, to learn, to gain experience and to avoid debt um, from your um, university degrees or your courses is the fact that it is fully funded and it is paid for. So you're not incurring any debt at the end of the day. So you're coming away with, with a degree or, or a level five a foundation degree or you're coming away with BTEC and it's fully funded and it's being paid for. And really that, that is the best part about the apprenticeship scheme. You're fast tracking your career because you're getting a wealth of experience whilst you are studying as well. So really whenever you come out at the end of this, you're in a much better position actually than a lot of other people who maybe have only had one year experience that may not have been consistent experience. And you're coming out with a wealth of experience. Look at how many years Dermot has come out with at the end at the end of his degree he'll have such a wealth of experience and he'll have his chartership and he'll have been on the foundation program that he'll be much better placed and um, whenever he comes out to progress in his career so just moving on I've touched on the benefits but we'll touch on them again and um, so it is a fully funded education you're earning a wage you can apply what you learn 
Um, so really what you learn in university, you can apply while you're working and, and your experience there. And also you can learn from what we're doing on the ground and apply that to your, um, your education. So it kind of works in both ways. You can learn from experienced staff, which is a great thing um, where we really mentor you and make sure that you're getting that knowledge that we all have. Um, you can gain job specific skills. So if you want to go into a specific area, you can get that specialism. There's time for training and study in your apprenticeship. So we gave you that time so you can study. And there's holiday pay and there's company benefits. So there's all these perks that go with an apprenticeship and the fact that you're earning while you're learning and you're coming out a much better position than a lot of other people. So just in terms of the progress um, for getting onto our apprenticeship scheme, so I know that uh, Rachel had touched on at the beginning about the UK government website, which we do use, but we would actually encourage you to get in touch with us directly, especially if, we're, if you're thinking about the two jobs that we have in Yarmouth and in Lowestoft. If you really feel like you, you might want to get involved in those, do get in touch with us directly. And I'll make sure Rachel and her team have our email addresses so you can send your CVs directly into us. Um, so those two jobs, 10 miles apart, uh, they're collectively two and um, 246 million pounds investment in the area. It's not often that jobs this big come to the East Coast. So definitely take the opportunity while it's here and get in touch with us to see if there are any opportunities for you. So it may not just be apprenticeship schemes, but it might be placements. It might be work experience, but do get in touch with us. We're really keen to hear from you. So just onto the next slide, um, that is another way to get in touch, but I'll make sure that Rachel um, has our contact details so you can get in touch with us directly. Brilliant, thank you everybody. That's been really informative and I hope everybody on the call um, feels the same. We have got a few questions that have come in. Um, so first of all, one was just to, some, just to check about local work experience within the area. So kind of the lowest off Yarmouth. So can just the four employers just note again for the people on the call what opportunities there could be to apply for work experience? Well, I go first. Um, go for definitely it, there will be work experience. <laughs> there will be work, work <laughs> experience opportunities both on our Gullwing project and on Great Yarmouth. Yarmouth Lovely, Third River Crossing um, with BAM, so those are, those are local projects and plenty yeah. of work experience opportunities right through until 2023. Lovely. And Paul? Likewise with the yeah. Public Risk Management Project. Yeah. Okay, so, yes, yeah, so from our perspective, we work across, we've got an awful lot of projects across the eastern part of the country at the moment, so um, our, our apprenticeship programme that includes, um, it's 15, it's a 15 month programme, as part of that, there's 60 days off-site when we do training and uh, classroom and, and on machinery, but uh, the rest of the period of the apprenticeship will be actually on-site getting experience. And, and I think looking at the projects we're looking at um, in East Anglia at the moment, there should be an awful lot of opportunity for, for local people to get work on local schemes. Lovely, thank you. Um, another one is how important is it I'll get my English and math before I start my apprenticeship? Or perhaps uh, I'll uh, I'll answer that one. Uh, yeah, because I didn't get a chance just to uh, confirm uh, our work experience, but for Bam, right, the work well, experience. Yeah, the, so the work experience for Bam will um, um, be available through our uh, uh, Shipdom local regional office. But uh, as Vicky said, uh, we're working together in Great Yarmouth, and that will be on the uh, Environment Agency framework locally too. So similar opportunities. But yeah, English and maths are very important for any apprenticeship. You need to be able to demonstrate functional skills. So. Uh, to, to have those minimum grades, um, they're very, very important. And uh, as engineering companies, we do tend to look for STEM specialism too, if that's if that's what you're looking to do, if, if it's the engineering um, uh, or construction that you're looking to do. Lovely, thank you. So another um, question that we've had in, um, if you could all think of one response to this, what is the top personal skill you would look for? Vicky? Um, for me, it's um, communication. Um, so I know it's, it's very difficult. Um, whenever you're going into your apprenticeship interview, so you can, you can um, do a great CV. 
and you come to your apprenticeship interview and it's very hard to think of references and, and things like that. But really, if you are going into your interview, prep for it. It'll be a competency-based interview. You need to think of all the different examples that you could give. So even think about teamwork and group work that you've done and um, maybe you've come up with a solution during the COVID-19 pandemic for um, doing that teamwork or group work uh, think about any teams that you played for if you played football all your kind of team building skills there and how you communicated with your team so really it's very important um, if you're going into engineering or any role within the business that you have great communication skills and we don't like to work in silos we like to work together as part of a big team so it's where you have those team building skills and also you have good communication skills where you can communicate throughout the, throughout the team lovely paul s i think to echo what vicky, <laughs> vicky said teamwork is really important uh, when we work on on the big schemes we're involved in you're working as part of a team. You, the machine you're operating will be part of a, a, a bigger picture on the project and working together to actually achieve, achieve the, the, um, the end result the site requires. So teamwork is really essential um, in, in our sector. Lovely. And Paul too. Yeah, um, so I'm not going to say teamwork or communication, but I acknowledge <laughs> the fact that they are really important. So just so we don't all say the same thing, and uh, we, you can see we're working as a team today, um, it's about problem solving. So matter, no matter what discipline you come into, there's going to be an element of problem solving in what you do. And uh, and of course, you do that by talking to people and working in teams rather than working on your own. Lovely. And Lizzie? Thanks. Yeah, I'm afraid I was going to say teamwork as well, um, because everyone working on a construction site um, plays their part in making making everything come together. Um, so sorry, it's a bit boring that we've all said the same thing, but it's so, so important. And, you know, from from the, the site cleaner, site receptionist to the project manager, to all the apprentices and operations staff and um, everyone makes 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 it happen. So um, just just remember to. Um, to think about the um the th working as a team and and uh, make sure that comes across when you when you're talking to any employer brilliant thank you so that's all of the questions we've had um i'm sure people on the call would welcome any emails with any further inquiries that people may have and um, we hope that you've you know got some real benefit from today about future opportunities in region and it's really exciting times for this sector so I'd like to thank all of um, the employers today for your time. Um, and as we said at the start, this will be recorded so we can share this out to the local schools and any college students that can attend as well. So thank you very much, everybody.